Whoa, 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 come back, come back, come back. Now, for anybody who's made it this far in the video, I wanted to give you a secret 11th, 11th tip. And that is, What's going on everybody? Computer Guy Chris here, and I recently released my final review on CS651 <laughs> Intro to Graduate Algorithms. Now this class might be the most popular class in the OMS CS program. The reason this class is so popular in OMS CS is because it's required for almost every single specialization within the program. And on my video, I was getting comments about how did I do in the class? And what did I think of the class overall? and what tips can you give to do well in the class. So I wanted to make this video on 10 tips on how to get an A in CS6515 Intro to Graduate Algorithms. So let's get started with number one. Starting off with number one, we have stay on top of the class. Now this really means two things. First of all, Make sure you attend all of the lectures, which means watch all the lecture videos for each week, and make sure to attend office hours when they're available, especially before exams. Before exams, the TAs will review an overview of the material and answer any obvious questions, and sometimes you get a little hint as to what type of questions will be on the exam. So make sure that you attend office hours, especially before exams. In addition, make sure that you read the comments on whatever discussion forum your class is using. My class used a discussion and reading those forums on the homeworks and on the exam posts before the exams and before attempting the homeworks made each of those much easier. So tip number one is stay on top of the class. All right, tip number two. So tip number two is to wait and read the forums before doing the homework. So each week you'll have a homework assignment, which is a written homework assignment, and they're usually asked to be typed out and then submitted as a PDF. Now, each week the TAs will come out with a post on the discussion forum to discuss each one of the problems on the homework. And this is where you want to wait a little bit, maybe a couple of days, maybe wait till the middle of the week, or if you can, wait till the weekend, because what will happen is they'll release the homework assignment on Tuesday or on Monday and throughout the week different people will ask questions as to the wording of the problem and by the time you get a little bit later in the week some of the simpler things have been knocked out and that way you can read these discussion forums and get an idea of how people are solving the problem instead of just running right at the problem right out the bat and you run into all those initial problems. So. Tip number two is wait and read the discussion forums before starting the homework. So tip number three is use the homeworks as a learning experience for the exams. Now this was something that was really hard for me to learn because I'm so used to the homeworks being a large percentage of my final grade. But in this class, the homeworks, the quizzes, and the coding projects all together are only worth the same as one exam. And because of that, you can really use the homeworks as learning for the exams because one multiple choice question on an exam is worth about the same as an entire homework. So if you understand the material better because of a homework, maybe you don't get the best grade, but you then get a multiple choice question correct on one of the exams, that makes up for your bad grade on the homework. Additionally, use the homework to understand the formatting of results that they want on the exams. So each question you have to understand how they want the answer to be presented. What type of sections do they want in the solution? And that way you can do better on the exam because again the exams are worth so much more percentage of the final grade than the homeworks. So tip number three is use the homeworks as a learning experience for the exams. All right, so tip number four is read the questions very carefully. And this is especially true in exams. 
Now in this class, the exams are different from the exams in almost every other class in the OMSCS program. In that, you'll have a written question and then you'll have to answer the question in a written format, so it's not coded. Because of this, sometimes the questions, and especially in the exams where you can't ask for definitions in the questions like you can for the homeworks, the question can be a little bit tricky to understand and you might interpret a word one way where they meant it a different way. Now because of this, what you want to do is understand the inputs and the outputs of what they're expecting and what they're giving. And if you make any assumptions on what you think the question is asking, make sure to write those assumptions down as you're answering your question. This will save you from losing a huge number of points on the written questions for the exams. And if you watch my review on CS6515, the final review, you'll know that the written questions on the exam are worth about one third for each written question. So making sure that you understand the question will save you from losing a big chunk. And this was actually one of the mistakes that I made on exam two. So tip number four is read the questions very carefully. So we're halfway through with tip number five. And tip number five is be careful with regrade requests. Now this class is a big class. It might even be the biggest class in the OMSCS program because of how popular it is. And because of that, the regrade policy is different from, it, from a lot of other classes in that you can actually lose points by submitting a regrade request even if your request is correct. And you can do this by the TAs finding additional places in your homework where they should have taken off points, but they didn't. Now because of this, remember that you can actually get hurt by submitting a regrade request. So my personal recommendation, and of course you have to make the choice for yourself, but my personal recommendation is to only submit regrade requests for exam questions if you know everything else in your question is correct. Now, personally, I don't think it was a good idea to submit regrade requests on homeworks because of how small they were in comparison to how powerful the exams were on your final grade, but that'll have to be a decision that you make. But on the exams, definitely be careful when you're going to submit a regrade request because the points on an exam are so valuable because they're worth such a large percentage of the final grade. So tip number five, not my favorite tip, but it is a good tip. Be careful with regrade requests. Now we are past the halfway point with tip number six, which is make sure to save your study material. Now remember that in this class, there's three main exams and a final exam. And as you're studying for each exam, you might make flashcards or go through Jove's notes or whatever you're going to do to study. And now remember after each exam to save your study material because you can use it when you're studying for the final, which is cumulative. And that way you won't have to redo all that work to make the flashcards or whatever you're doing in order to study for the test because you'll have your notes that you use to study for, let's say, exam one to study for the cumulative final. So tip number six is save your study material. Now to tip number seven, which is repeat, repeat, repeat. Now this is important because of the formatting of the solutions that this class wants for exams and homeworks. Because this class wants the formatting of the homework to be kind of in these little sections. So let's say for the first couple of homeworks when you're doing dynamic programming, they want a section that explains your solution in words, they want a section that explains your solution in pseudocode, and then they want a section that explains your solution in time development. And because of this, they grade each section kind of separately. So if you say something in one section, let's say you describe a little bit of your solution in part A, make sure you're repeating that part of the solution in part B and C or you will lose points. Now I had to learn this the hard way, but after I did, I was able to implement this solution in exams and in future homeworks and I didn't lose points on it again. So tip number seven is repeat, repeat, repeat. 
Getting close to the end here, tip number eight is form a study group. Now, like I said, this class is one of the most popular classes in the OMS CS program. And because it's so popular, you'll have a lot of other students that you can share your experience with. So I thought it was very smart and it was something that I did to form a study group within the class. Now this happens very early, so be aware that in the beginning of the class you're going to get bombarded by messages on the discussion forum. But if you can form a good group of strong students who want to do well in the class, you guys can share different ways that you study that's helpful, different questions in the textbook that you think might be valuable on the exam, and just different ways that you're having success in the class or even struggles in the class, and it makes the whole experience a little bit easier. So tip number eight is to form a study group. Tip number nine is possibly my favorite tip, and it is to use outside resources. Now this class does a fair job in their lecture material on explaining the concepts, but sometimes I found that they got a little bit deeper in the math than what is needed for the exams or for the homeworks. And so I found it valuable to use resources like YouTube or the wiki dots, especially for exams, on understanding the material. Now YouTube I use to just get different understandings of the material from different people who maybe were doing example problems that weren't done in the lectures, but the wiki dot gave great questions that were very similar to the questions, at least one question, on each one of the exams. And that means if you understand the questions in the wiki dot, and I'll have the wiki dot down in the description if you want to find it, but if you understand those questions, then you have a good chance of understanding at least one of the written questions on the exam. And this really gives you two advantages. One, obviously it makes you more likely to do well on the exam on that specific question. But two, if you understand one of the questions, that means you can answer that one pretty quickly and spend more time on the other question and the multiple choice section, which for me was very helpful, especially on exam three, because I had a little bit of trouble with question one and I finally figured it out almost towards the end of the exam. And that was because I was prepared going in, being able to answer question two very quickly. So tip number nine is use outside resources. Finally, tip number 10, which is use the exam waiting to your advantage. Now, like I've said, in this class, the exams are worth 75% of your grade, and each exam is worth 25% of your final grade. And because of this, the, the exams have a lot of pressure that come with them. However, that also means that if you do really well on one exam and you keep up with the homeworks, you are almost guaranteed to pass the class because you really don't have to do that well on the other two exams in order to get the 70 which is needed to pass the class. So tip number 10 is to use the exam waiting to your advantage. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope the tips were helpful in your experience in this class. Like I said, I was able to do very well in this class and ended my final grade with an A, which I was very proud of. So I use these tips to get that grade and hopefully they help you do just as well. If you have any questions or comments about anything I said, leave a comment in the comment section and please like the video. It helps me out a ton. As always, thank you for everybody who subscribed to this channel and I look forward to seeing you in the future and all of your success in the OMS CS program. And as always, subscribe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come back, come back, come back. Now for anybody who's made it this far in the video, I wanted to give you a secret 11th, 11th tip. And that is take a deep breath. It gets easier. Now for me, this class was a lot of pressure. It felt like the last class that I had to get through in order to complete my time in the OMS CS program because it is a difficult class and it's a class that almost everybody has to take. But my biggest piece of advice that I can give in this class is to take a deep breath and it gets easier. I thought that exam one, 
the exam on dynamic programming and divide and conquer was the hardest exam out of all four, including the final. So my experience was actually even a little bit worse than that because while taking exam one, my computer shut down. And because of that, I did very poorly. But I was able to make it up with my final exam. And because of that, I was able to end the class with an A. So even if you don't do well on exam one, or if you do well on exam one and then do poorly on a following exam, take a deep breath, it gets better, and you'll do great on the final. So like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope the tips were helpful. Leave a like and subscribe, and I hope you all do great in this class.